Remember how crime was not going to skyrocket when we got rid of the cops? Remember that? That was funny. That was really super funny. Uh, I bring you the genius of AOC. Okay, so AOC was asked about why crime is continuing to surge in places like New York. And it is continuing to surge. So the New York Post reports, New York's plague of gun crime continued this weekend with 15 people shot in the same number of hours since midday on Saturday, police sources told the Post. So 15 shootings in 15 hours in New York City. The shootings, including a 21-year-old man left fighting for his life after being shot in the head while sitting in a car in Sheepshead Bay early on Sunday, were more in one day than the whole of the same week last year, according to sources. They kept 43 shootings so far this week, more than triple last year's tally of 13 for the same period. I'd gone to bed early, and the next thing I knew, I heard two pops out my window that sounded just like fireworks, said a neighbor who identified herself as Lucy of the Sheepshead Bay shooting. Well, I heard plenty of fireworks around here a week ago. I didn't think anything of it until I heard someone screaming, and then there were police lights and ambulance lights. So there are tons and tons of shootings over the weekend. Commissioner Dermot Shea has blamed bail reform and prisoner releases over the coronavirus pandemic for the, for the alarming rise in gun crime, which has brought increased criticism for Mayor Bill de Blasio. Criminal justice experts say the cops should focus on the flow of illegal guns into the city instead of just playing the blame game. So you're, you're, only, you're never supposed to blame the politicians for cutting the cops. You're supposed to blame the cops for not doing a better job policing while you're cutting the cops. By the way, crime is surging around the country. It is not just in New York City. According to the Wall Street Journal, in Milwaukee, homicides are up 37% so far this year, on pace to break the record of 167 in 1991, which included 16 murders by Jeffrey Dahmer. Homicides so far this year in Chicago are ahead of the pace in 2016. That was the city's highest tally since 1996. In New York and LA, killings this year are up 23% and 11.6%. In Kansas City, Missouri, they've recorded 99 killings since January, far outpacing any record for the first six months of the year. Community groups acknowledge the crime increase, but say more aggressive policing to combat it shouldn't come at the expense of enacting broader reform. Oh, is that, is that what's happening right now? It, it is not a shock that as you continue to slash police budgets and signal to criminals that they can basically get away with it, and that if a cop attempts to defend a citizen, that that cop may be hauled up for arrest, that's going to be a bit of a problem. City leaders and law enforcement officials say the months of lockdown, rising unemployment, more guns on the street, and the fallout from mass protests over the George Floyd killing helped create conditions for more violence. At the same time, law enforcement officials say they are weighing the risks of aggressively enforcing the law, concerned that a backlash from activists, protesters, and residents could trigger attacks on police or a replay of the riots and looting that marked some of the earlier protests. In some cases, officials say police are backing away from some kinds of petty crime arrests that give them a higher profile on the street, hoping to quell tensions, which of course is exactly the wrong tactic. It's exactly the wrong tactic. Broken windows policing, which was utilized in New York City in the aftermath of the great crime wave beginning in the 60s and stretching all the way to the early 1990s. Broken window policing was the idea that you have to stop ignoring the, the people who are jumping turnstiles. You actually have to start policing small level crime because if you don't, then people will engage in larger scale crime. Police departments all over the country have decided they're no longer going to do this. And so naturally you're seeing more violence. And that violence is becoming politicized. There's an awful, awful case out of Indianapolis According to the Post Millennial, a 24-year-old named Jessica Doty was fatally shot early on Sunday, allegedly following an argument with supporters of Black Lives Matter. The victim's family said the dispute was sparked by an argument involving Black Lives Matter and language, according to Fox 59. The two sides parted ways before witnesses claimed the perpetrator opened fire from a bridge nearby and then ran away. The victim's father, Robert J. Doty, told Cassandra Fairbanks his daughter told the Black Lives Matter supporters that, quote, all lives matter. He said, apparently, the victim's fiance, Jose Ramirez, said it was squashed, they went, up the, they went up the hill and left, we thought, but they were sitting on St. Clair waiting for us to come under the bridge, and that's when she got shot. She had a three-year-old son, apparently. Two people were shot in the same area one week earlier, including a 14-year-old. That 14-year-old died in what the authorities deemed an attempted armed robbery. So good things happening all across the country on crime. Thankfully, we have explanations, complex explanations for what's happening from geniuses, the likes of AOC. Uh, Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, obviously one of the very freshest of the faces, very fresh, very face. Here she was explaining, the representative from New York, exactly why people are shooting each other in mass numbers in New York. So why is this uptick in crime happening? Well, let's think about it. Do we think this has to do with the fact that there's record unemployment in the United States right now? The fact that people are at a level of economic desperation that we have not seen since the Great Recession? Maybe this has to do with the fact that people aren't paying their rent and are scared to pay their rent. And so they go out and they need to feed their child and they don't have money. So you 
maybe have to, they're put in a position where they feel like they either need to shoplift some bread or go hungry that night. Um, so shoplifting is not the problem right now. I'm just going to point that out. Larceny is actually down in New York City. Shoplifting is not the actual issue. Shooting people in minority areas is not a response to I'm hungry. Like that, that's not the way this works. It's not, okay, I'm missing bread tonight. Like, listen, I understand the argument that poverty drives crime. I do. I get it. But let me tell you what poverty generally does not have to drive. Murdering other people who are impoverished. That is not correct. Okay, if you want to say that Jean Valjean has to steal the loaf of bread because he's hungry, all right, that's not what you're seeing. You're seeing people shoplift a TV because they're what? Hungry for a TV? You're seeing people shoot each other in huge numbers in New York City. Because why? Because of the uptick in, in COVID or something? I'm going to go, this is a pretty easy answer. You withdraw the police from high crime areas and the crime goes back up. Very, very easy. But according to AOC, it's all because of bread lines. It's all because of bread. People aren't shooting bread. They're not. Okay, they're not, they're not shooting the bread. And they're not stealing the bread. That's not what's going on here. They're not going down to the local grocery store and just picking up a bag of veggies and then holding up the counter clerk. That's not what's happening. People are being shot in mass numbers because you decided to remove the police. This is all genius, genius, galaxy brain kind of stuff here. Okay, what you're talking about here is just people who are acting like criminals. And I think it's fair to call a person who shoots a child a thug. I think that's fair, regardless of race. So if you do that, I, I have very little sympathy for the idea that you are doing this out of sheer desperation because you lost your job. I just, I don't think that that's the case. I don't think anybody goes and loses their job in the United States. They go, you know what? I'm gonna go shoot the 13-year-old on the next block. That seems like a, a big miss there. But again, when your agenda is to tear down the entire system, then you go with it, I guess. And you go with it. This video is sponsored by Blinksell. It is the revolutionary invoicing software for small businesses. Spend less time billing, more time making the money with Blinksell. Go down to the link in our description and give it a click.